Are you looking for a stripper? A stripper that really gets it off? Coopers. The stripper that gets it off every time. No sanding. So easy. None of that toxic, messy dust floating around. Simon Cooper here. And George Cooper. From the Cooper Strip Club with uh, Dory Cooper behind the camera. Hello. I'm going to show you how to take all that backing paper and tire and all that sort of stuff off and bring it back to the raw. So we've got 1.3 square meters of surface we're going to be doing and we're going to show you as much as possible and you can do it standing up. So on these triggers what we've done is we've just wound them back to so it's just off being a jet that way it's ideal for doing it when you're standing up. Now this paper and the tar paper particularly who knows what it's made of and so you definitely don't want dust with this sort of project and people get in there with their sanders and all that sort of stuff and they don't know what they're breathing up. In a room like this where it's quite confined you can um, get your charcoal mask and of course it makes it really difficult for me to tell you what's what so that's why I don't wear it but in a room like this I would be wearing this because we're doing a big area then. I'm only doing 1.3 square meters, so no drama, but the room is ventilating as we go. So we've got a fan in the window, not just somewhere random, it's actually deliberately there, forcing air out. It's actually an old dental clinic. The murder house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if we look at this paperbacked one here, it's got a lot more material and it wants to soak in faster. So we're just going to spray some more on to keep it wet. This one really isn't taking long to ask for some more, so you just give it when it wants it. And because this is now wet, we don't have dust. Quarter of an hour after first putting it on, and we've noticed that on this paper backing one, there's these yellowy parts that look a lot thicker than the grey. So George is going to scoop those off. So, isn't that satisfying, guys? Check that. See if we can find some tacks. Mm. They're coming to take us away. Uh -huh. It's a bit Part that has come off this actually gone right down to the floor glue underneath. But Show us on the bitumen one. Okay. I'm not quite sure if this one will be ready yet, but oh, okay. I'll take that back. So it's a matter of testing, isn't it? Um, is it ready? Yes, no. Have play. I think that is needing a few more minutes. But there's no need to rush these kind of things. It's been another 10 ish minutes. So we're going to take the rest of this paper off and Get it right down to the wood. Oh my god, it's so sick. My window cleaner. Yeah. There we are. It's all about working smart, not hard, people. And we're most of the way there. This is probably our step two on the guide, which is stripping what's in the wood. So we've now clearly taken off what's on. So we'll go down the other end now and see what this black tarlin's up to. my whole life and for some reason this never gets boring just watching this moment yes it has been doing this whole life these thick finishes you just use obviously more stripper than if you're stripping a thin shellac floor so it's worked its right way right through it so i'll puff some more on there let the product do the work for george and <laughs> yeah, just raise a child and then they can strip yeah you do not have to be crawling around the floor. One of the things we're trying to show today is you can do most of this standing up. 
my knees don't quite work the way they used to. So this here is a spatula attached to a random pole with a big old bolt and some red tape. So very sophisticated. You can see where the wood is drinking it up. Just make sure you keep it wet. We'll end up using about one litre of strip oak for a square metre of surface at, at this point. This is what I thought it would be around because there's so much stuff sitting on top. If you pour a litre of water onto a surface one millimetre thick, it'll cover one square metre. Nice, fast and easy. Just want to show you a bit of rubbish control. So go for it, George. One white spatula. Oh, bonus. Yes. So, so all the stripper, well, most of the stripper that we've actually put on is sitting in the stuff we've taken off. And so if we get it into a bin, rather than leaving it on the floor, if you just leave it on the floor, of course, it's all going to slowly evaporate away into the room. And see that paper down there, George, as well. So we're just going to put some more stripper on here. So this is now the same as the other end. We've basically both sides are now caught up with each other. So again, this is stripping what's in the wood. I think the wood is mat high. The strip has been on the wood for probably five minutes, I suppose. And we're going to now get our, our grit embedded pad, which is like a nylon type pad, which has got a 180 grit um, put into it. So you press down onto it, and then you scrub the direction of the wood, and just massage those bits out. Look how easy that is. So you said 180 grit, are you saying that? No. Uh, it's a good point. We do get picked up on this from one time. The, when this was sanded, uh, when it was put down, the sanding left thousands of little sandpaper grooves across the floor. And if you imagine a record player needle, these little needles in the, these grits get into those sandpaper grooves and sweep it out. So we're not removing wood. You can hear it biting and it's going into those sandpaper grooves. Again, this blue thing, you, you go to a cleaning centre, one of those cleaning suppliers, that the commercial cleaners shop at, you'll find these types of poles and gripper things all there. That's what we've got ours. When one side's done, just flip it over. The idea of the pole is again, not having to be down on your hands and knees, but there may be a few little parts that you do get down on the hands and knees for, but let's keep that stuff to an absolute minimum. Squeegees are amazing. You always have to squeeze you on a bit of an angle like George is doing, it sort of like a pushes it to one side, so it keeps the surface as dry as possible. Ugh. What's next? Flushing, flushing. We're nearly there, guys. So we've taken off what's on the surface, that's all that paper and tire and everything. Then we took off what's in the surface, so that's all that glue and whatever was in there. So we get our blue one. So this is flusher. What are we rinsing? Rinsing off all the residues of the stripper and the remaining finish. We want to have a nice clean surface, which is ready for refinishing. That's are we neutralizing? No need to. The stripper itself is actually already practically gas neutral. And so there's actually nothing to neutralize. So this is a slow drying solvent spirit. And the idea is to rinse away, flush away the soft residue. So George has put a clean pad onto the hole. Now the flusher is slow drying and that gives us more time to do scrubbing with because it's more time to work.
We're just quickly wiping away the residues. The wet look is what we call the finish look. On our guide, you'll read, you know, because we all our whole system is about no sanding. And, and the reason it's no sanding is because it's already sanded. When it's wet with flusher at this point, this is telling you what you're going to get when you put a finish on. When this dries, it will quite possibly take on a sort of manky look, if you call it that, and you get tempted to get sandpaper out. And again, it's exactly what you do not want to do. So if you're happy with it wet, then that's what it's going to look like with a finish on. And the dry dog to say, not the gloss, but the colour. It's looking done. Yeah. That's now a prepared floor. This one's been prepared for our moisturiser. What we discovered years ago is that the wood is already hard. It's had 100 years of being hardened through time and through being walked over and the outer surface is as hard as nails. And we want to take advantage of the, the hardened surface. The, the moisturiser is a blend of gum, oils and different waxes. Let's spray it on. We really do not want to saturate it like we would with normal moisturiser. The, the floor is a, a different animal. I mean, this, this room is relatively small, but you get someone that's got a big hallway or, or a big lounge or maybe you bought an old church or an old schoolhouse. You've got acres of floor and you don't want to be using moisturiser like you would on a dining table. You um, handle it differently. If you find that there's some real thirsty bits, don't worry, because it's going to get more applications. This is a stringy mop in a small room. Effectively, just go over it. And that is it. It's done. And that is a really easy way of moisturising your floor. Let me show what you would do if you were doing a, a large floor. I mean, I'm talking acres of floor. This is a large 18 inch round pad. It's not too coarse or anything. It's got no grits in it, like the black pads. Um, and so you've got this large hall, old church, that type of thing. And so you've lightly misted on the, the moisturizer and given it a bit of time to work. And we come up to it with one of these. This is an 18 inch electric floor polisher. Plug it in and away she goes. I'm not going to use it today because it's way too small an area. But basically you pull the handle and, and when you first use it, it's going to want to move you around a little bit as well. But you very quickly get the hang of the handles and it doesn't score the floor. And it's a real good way to put a bit of friction and it forces the moisturizer in. And it's a really good way of, on a large floor, polishing up the moisturizer fast. When it's got the moisturizer on, you've buffed it up, etc. then you decide if you can live with the holes or not. You might want to fill some of these now holes. Again, you don't have to with this sort of finish because our finish is in the wood. And so what we're doing here, just as a thing to show you, put some more moisturizer on there. You see the, the wood is this fawny color, but where the nail hole is, it's, it's black. So what we do is we, if I can make my own self bleed. We get this wax stick. This is a black colored wax stick. So normally you would buy the color filler that matches the wood and you actually need to match where the rust is. So you're friction filling. Yes, good thinking. Friction filling, so we do the friction, the heat of the friction warms it, puts it in, and then we... We think black on black looks better. The other way it looks a bit like an eyeball. And there's about six, seven colors of these filler sticks that we have. And we're done. Yeah. Beautiful. This shows you what you can do with a ready old floor that just looks like it's got no future and it just was amazing. So as we said before, this floor is as hard as nails through time of hardening and walking and everything. So this is gonna wear really, really well. To maintain it every now and again, if it's looking a little bit lackluster, you just puff moisturizer onto it. If it's got a bit of grime on it, grab a hold of the blue pole with the grip pad on it and 
use your stringy mop. Basically, get some tools. When you buy a new carpet for a house, what do you do? You go out and get a new vacuum cleaner. So, you know, get yourself a floor polisher if you've got big floors, that sort of thing. Once you get the hang of it, unbelievably easy floor to look after. And the cool news is you never, ever, ever, ever have to sand it again. Because you didn't even sand it this time. So you just, it's, it's programmed simple maintenance and the floor gets better and better over time. So there it is. So we're done for the day. And there's a 1.3 meters, square meters of floor done and actual work time was not much at all, especially for me, because George had posted up. <laughs> now, you may not be doing floors, you might be doing weatherboards. What else can people do? Um, boats, I guess. Boats, yeah, boats. A furniture, doors, garage doors, cars. Anti foul. Anti foul, yeah, anti foul. People don't know when you do anti foul. Mm. All sorts. Send us photographs. If you've got a project, send us a photo photograph of what you're doing. It gives an idea of square meterages, that sort of stuff. And we'll give you an idea of what, what's in store for you and that sort of stuff. We may well have a video of it already we can point you at. So yeah, so we'll be back some other time with some other project. So what we like to say is if you're looking for a stripper. A stripper that gets it off. And that <laughs> really gets it off. Oh yeah. Coopers, the stripper that gets it off every time. <laughs>